Hi everyone, this is the video lesson for 5.7 Trig Identities Day 1 Part 1. Now before we start, I do want to talk about a couple of strategies that you can use to solve almost every single case. So number one is you always start with the more difficult side. And again, it's not mandatory that you start with the more difficult side. In fact, I will show you some examples where I'll start with the left-hand side, and when I'm done, I'll redo the same example, starting at the right-hand side, to show you that eventually, through practice, you can start from either left or the right. But, and so learning this for the first time, it's better to start with the more difficult side. Number two, write in terms of sine or cosine. And again, this is more when you get a trig proof in terms of tan x, cosecant x, secant x, cotangent x, and to express it in terms of sine and cosine to make it a little bit simpler. Number three, simplify algebraically. And again, this is a combination of different skills. So sometimes this requires factoring, other times you might be expanding, sometimes you're combining two fractions into one, one fraction into two. It really depends on the example, which we'll demonstrate in a moment. Number four, use the tools in the toolbox. So this, I'm gonna explain after number five. I'm gonna explore a couple of ideas that you're gonna see again and again and again. Number five, factor and or use the move. This is probably the most important step because if you think about the difficulty behind trade proofs, the easy and medium examples, you can probably get away with by using strategies number one to four. But number five, especially the move, this will show you at the end of part two today, that is the ultimate move you can make for a quote unquote difficult trick proof. Let's keep going. Again, today's day one. So I'm starting with some basic tools in the toolbox and we're gonna add on to this on day two Part one. So again, if you think about grade 10 academic math, you've done the following. 10x, by definition, is going to be sine x over cosine x. Or, if you square both sides, 10 square x equals to sine square x divided by cos square x. Another useful tool is to recognize that sine square x plus cos square x equals to one. And again, once you know this, you're gonna use it a lot. And to be very explicit, of course, you can isolate for cos square x, which becomes one minus sine square x. Or if you isolate for sine square x, that's gonna be one minus cos square x. So again, these are the basic cases you should know. And of course, I'll use a different color in number five, notice how I wrote down factoring. And there are a couple of common skills inside factoring. So one of them for sure is the difference of squares. So a minus b times a plus b equals the a square minus b square. And of course, specifically we think about this in terms of sine and cosine. One idea is to recognize that one minus sine x times one plus sine x equals to one minus sine square x, which really, if you circle back, equals to cos square x, or one minus cos x times one plus cosine x equals to one minus cos square x. And again, if you circle back, this is gonna be the same as sine square x. So again, these are some of the basic tools we're gonna to use to explore the following examples with. Let's keep going. Prove the following. Again, like I said in the first page, you can start with the left-hand side, you can start with the right-hand side, it's really up to you. So, sometimes it's hard to figure out which is the more quote-unquote difficult side. So, let me start with the left-hand side. LS means left side, so step one, copy this. Step two, look at the right-hand side. Notice how on the right-hand side, it says two sine square x minus one. 
this means I only want to express this in terms of sine. I do not want cosine. That's really important. You want to begin with the end in mind and reverse engineer. So this is telling you I don't want cos square x. So you copy what you do want, which is sine square x, and you write down cos square x in terms of sine square x. And again, you have to eventually, through practice, memorize a lot of these ideas. So cos square x is 1 minus sine square x. Then you keep going. You can expand this. This is going to be sine square x minus 1 plus sine square x, which means when you collect like terms, sine square x plus sine square x is 2 sine square x minus 1, which equals to the right-hand side. That's it. Done. Number 2. Again, tan square x plus 1 equals to 1 divided by cos square x. In fact, this is the introduction of the next day, day 2, which you'll see once we get to the reciprocal cases. But for now, here's the major concept. Again, if you look at the left-hand side, it says tan square x plus 1. This is quote-unquote more difficult because when there are two parts, you can always combine them into one part. So always start with the side that has more parts. Again, one of the rules says we write this in terms of sine and cosine. So sine square x divided by cos square x is the same as tan square x. And of course, 1 is the same as 1 over 1. The goal is to combine them as one fraction. And to find the common denominator, you look at 1 and cos square x, which means the common denominator is going to be cos square x. So you have to multiply the second fraction by the missing common denominator. And again, when you combine this, you now have cos square x in the denominator. If you look at the top, sine square x plus cos square x, it's equal to 1. So again, notice how you combine them. You have to recognize the tools from the toolbox, and you keep going. And of course, if I just copy this, this is 1 over cos square x, which is exactly the same as the right-hand side. Again, number 1, number 2, done. Number 3. Now, tan square x, or tan x I mean, plus 1 over tan x equals to 1 divided by sine x times cosine x. So again, step 1, start with the more difficult side. Because there are two parts on the left, I'm starting with 10x plus 1 over 10x. And again, through practice, I'm going to show you more and more shortcuts. But at this point, let's stick to the basics. 10x is the same as sine x over cosine x. And of course, if you look at the second part, 1 over 10x technically would have been cosine x over sine x. But let's slow down. Express 10x as sine x over cosine x first. Again, 1 is the same as 1 over 1. Don't forget that when there's a fraction divided by a second fraction, you take the first fraction and you multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. And that's going to be cosine x over sine x, just like that. Again, if you look at the right-hand side, there's one fraction. So the next step is to combine them with a common denominator. So again, the common denominator is going to be cosine x, sine x. You have to multiply the first fraction by the missing common denominator. Likewise, you have to multiply the second fraction by the missing common denominator. This means sine x times sine x is sine square x. Cos x times cos x is cos square x. And again, recognizing that this equals to 1. So now, when you rewrite this, just by copying, and I can even rewrite this in terms of sine x cosine x, just to keep it in the same sequence as the right-hand side, you are done. Now, here's the most important part. So before you continue watching part 2 in a moment, the challenge is, are you able to go back? And we do this starting with the right-hand side. This is really good to practice your thinking 
in reverse order. So go back and try number one, but start with the right hand side. Then continue with number two, start with the right hand side. Number three, start with the right hand side, or you can redo these without looking. So again, the last tip I want to give you is following trick proofs, very doable. Almost everybody will follow. On the other hand, to do this by yourself, that's a very, very different mindset. So I hope this makes sense and I'll see you in part two.